The designer I selected from the What Was Good Design Museum of Modern Arts message 1944-56 exhibition is Ava Zeisel. Zeisel was born November 13, 1906 in Budapest, Hungary as Ava Amalia Stricker to Alexander Stricker and Laura Polanyi Stricker. Zeisel's father was the owner of a textile factory and her mother was a highly educated feminist activist with a PhD in history from Budapest University. In 1923, Zeisel began studying painting at Budapest's Royal Academy of Fine Arts. However, with her mother's urging, she withdrew after three semesters to pursue a more practical trade. Thus, Ava Zeisel apprenticed herself to Jakob Karapanchik, a potter, and graduated a journeyman. Throughout this time, her work began to take on the smooth, sensuous, organic style which would go on to become a distinguishing feature of Zeisel's designs. In 1925, Zeisel visited the Exposition Internationale des Arts Décoratifs et Industriels Modernes in Paris. This introduced her to international style, the Bauhaus, and other modern movements. According to William L. Hamilton from the New York Times 2011, she later wrote that she thought modernist design too cold, a quality she spent much of her professional life trying to keep out of her work with humane, humorous versions of it. After graduating a ceramicist, Zeisel set up a pottery studio with a kiln at her family home and sold her products at markets. Her work soon garnered attention as it was displayed at the Philadelphia Sesquicentennial in the United States in 1926. Ava Zeisel was hired that same year by a pottery company in Budapest, where she made designs for mass-produced decorative objects. The next year, Zeisel went on to work with Hansa Kunstkeramik Pottery in Hamburg, after which she moved to Schramberg, Germany in 1928 to work as a tableware designer in an industrial design operation, the Schramberger Majolique Fabrique, for two years. These jobs formed her from a studio artist into an industrial designer. Her design success were now dependent on mass manufacturability and effective merchandising, not merely aesthetic alone. Zeisel moved around a great deal as an industrial ceramicist. For a period of time, she worked as a designer for the Lomonosov State Porcelain Factory in Leningrad, Russia, now St. Petersburg. Here she realized and later wrote that the clean lines of modern design could be successfully combined with sensuous classic shapes after exposure to the factory's archives. Henceforth, Ava Zeisel's designs adopted a combined modernist and 18th century Russian aesthetic. In 1936, Ava Zeisel was accused of conspiring to kill Stalin and was imprisoned. Upon her release in September 1937, she married Hans Zeisel and together, in 1938, the couple immigrated to New York. Zeisel quickly found work in the United States and was hired in 1939 by Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, where she taught her students ceramics as industrial design, not handicraft as it was traditionally taught. Zeisel was commissioned by many companies such as Sears Roebuck & Company, Hall China Company and Western Stoneware Company to design various wares and, though she resigned from teaching in 1953, she continued her work as a designer up until she died on December 30th, 2011 at age 105. One of Zeisel's many works is the Museum Dinner Service, circa 1942-45 commissioned by Castleton, China and New York City's Museum of Modern Art. It is a monochromatic porcelain dinner service with a clean, flowing form that evokes a sense of the organic. This set is part of the Museum of Modern Art's What Was Good Design exhibition, and while Zeisel opposed the form follows function mantra of modernism, when held up to Dita Rams's principles of good design, her work clearly reflects good design. The design of the tableware ensures the product's usefulness, as Zeisel's smooth, colourless form does not hinder or distract from its usefulness. It in fact adds to it as the clean, sensuous lines make it easier to understand and use. The museum dinner service is aesthetic in that the simplicity of its design, without overstimulating fussy embellishments, is pleasing to the eye and this contributes a sense of quietness for the user's well-being. The sinuous, gentle curves are calming to the user and visually light and comforting, unlike chunkier pottery that might give the user a sense of being weighed down. Zeisel's design is long-lasting. In taking inspiration from the past and combining it with clean, modernist aesthetics, Zeisel made this dinner service appear timeless.
She didn't rely on trends from any era when forming the design. It appears that it could have come from any time period, including the future, and it's hard to imagine it becoming antiquated or obsolete. The ceramic ware is also relatively environmentally friendly, particularly when compared to many other common tableware materials, especially plastic. According to Awa Lodhi from a Lux magazine, if the heat is well managed and distributed, and if no toxic materials are added to the clay or in the finish, it seems there are few materials around that are as durable and eco-friendly as ceramics. With its pair-back design, both physical and visual pollution are minimised. The main feature that makes Zeisel's museum dinner service good design is how minimal the design is. This is in line with Rams's principles. Good design is as little design as possible meaning the design is not overcomplicated with essentials. While Zeisel's design is more than bare minimum, the small design features are still part of the essential aspects. This minimalism in design contributes to the rest of Dieter Rams's principles. When comparing my own work to the same principles that I've put Ava Zeisel's work up against, my design practice is somewhat aligned, but I've realised it could be improved. Being paintings, it's quite difficult to evaluate their usefulness as products, and I have forged my own aesthetic which I believe is pleasing. When composing the paintings, I've never tried to copy current trends which would date my artwork. In any case, portraiture doesn't tend to age poorly. My design process isn't entirely environmentally friendly, but I dispose of as little material as possible and my process is becoming more digital. One could argue that my artworks do not display as little design as possible, but I have still been careful not to over-design my work. As my previous work has all been based in visual art, I have never really considered most of Dieter Rams's principles. My focus during my creation process has always been on expressing a story through detail and aesthetic. Researching Zeisel and good design has made me more aware that these principles are going to be necessary in my future work. Moving forward as a designer, I will have to consider most, if not all, of these points in my creation process.